Let's go to the saloon. Wait a minute. Is that straight? Search for snakes. Uh, hello? You're a cutie pie. Hi! Did you try your best, but it's not enough? Oh god. Did, did you die? What the fuck? What is happening? All right, just boot up the game. And this is what I see. Warning. This game contains mature content. Please familiarize yourself with the content warnings before proceeding. 18 plus only minors. Go. I actually did read it before, so you are running the latest version. Let's start. What experience are you looking for? Safe for work? Safe for casual gameplay? Still contains cursing, romance, written gore, and violence. Not safe for work. Contains disturbing subject matter such as non-con, sex, drugs, abuse, extreme gore, violence, and nudity. Please familiarize yourself with the warnings. I have the editing skills of a master. Hello there. Hello. Ooh. My, my, you look worn out. I'm shocked you haven't come here sooner. I'd like a room. Of course. But first, I need your name and your register and uh, for our registry. What's my name? <laughs> it's not YN. I know that for sure. Hopefully, I can actually put it. Yes. I pressed something. Stop. Um, degenerate. All right, Degenerate, how many nights would you be staying with us? A couple? I'm not sure yet. Oh, well, that's quite fine. We've been needing the customers, so we should have no problem accommodating you. Well, that wraps everything up. Your room is in the first one on the left. The innkeeper motions down the hallway, extending down the small inn. You give him a curt nod before making your way down. You enter a small inn room, tired from your travels. You find that you're staring at yourself, a mirror across from the doorway. What are your pronouns? My pronouns are they, them. Oh, Fully customizable? Boobies! I am light. Confirm. Hey, yo! I think this sounds more fun. I look cool, you know? You check yourself out one more time in the mirror, finding yourself feeling quite lonely in your room. Part of you wonders what you should do with your couple of days here. Maybe you have a chance to have a little fun with someone here. No ties. Oh my. So the first thing on your mind is sleep. You crawl into bed, budding, bundling yourself up in the soft covers. You feel tired. You close your eyes, trying to get some shut-eye. You wake up with a small jolt, ready to experience the next day. Change outfit. Open your storage trunk. Go to sleep. Back to the parlor. What would you like to do? Go to your room. Talk to the innkeeper. Head outside. Talk to the innkeeper? Question mark. Hello. This is so dark. It's so dark in here, guys. Put on, turn on the light or something. You approach the innkeeper, a soft smile on his face. How can I help you, traveler degenerate? You look at him eagerly. I was just wondering if there was anything you had for me. The innkeeper's eyes narrow a little, curious by your statement. Depends. Do you have something to tell me? What do you want to tell the innkeeper? What would I tell them? Um, hi? Hi. Um, I suppose you don't. Th that's quite fine. You turn and head back to the parlor. I don't know what I would have said. What would you like to do? I guess I'll head outside. You find yourself in Summerfair Town Square. Where would you like to go? There's a lot of things you could do here. Um, let's go to the... We got money, the store. Oh, hello. Peoples. You enter Summerfair's trading post. What would you like to do? Talk to the rugged cowgirl. 
Talk to the clerk. You approach the store clerk. How can I help you? Browse clothing. Realize you really don't want anything and awkwardly shuffle away. Uh, browse items. You look over the items in stock. Ooh, miscellaneous. Sugar fishing rod. Twenty dollars. Huh? Never mind. But to take all my money, I'm all bankrupt. <laughs> Uh, don't really want to talk to this cowgirl. You find yourself... Um... Uh, the sheriff's office. Sheriff yells at you as soon as you enter. I don't want to hear about that damn bo Oh. Sorry. You aren't who I was expecting. How can I help you? Report a crime? Look into public records? I'd like to go back outside. Uh, this is weird. There's no, like direction i can go but i mean i could do anything <laughs> freedom get to know him you approach the officer smiling brightly hello sir hello stranger you're the sheriff is that correct you sound suspicious yes sir officer jedediah at your service his tone is stern his eyebrows raise in fake interest at you just saying hello getting to know everyone that's all you recover, smiling before giving him a nod and stepping away. He tips his hat. Relations updated. There's a relations menu? How do you get to that? Look into public records? You approach a hardy book in the corner of the room. Apparently this is where the public records are stored. You flip through the pages, only two things coming to your attention. Crimes regarding a man named Will Curtis and an unknown source. Both take place in the woods, huh? I'd like to go back outside. You find yourself in some. Yes, I'm not gonna keep reading that. Let's go to the saloon. Wait a minute. Is that straight? Wait a minute. That's gotta be Ren. Oh my gosh, it is. You enter the saloon. The atmosphere cheering and filling filled with glee. Who would like to talk to? The dancer, the drunk man, the bartender? That's Strayed and Ren. I know him them anywhere. Let's go to the bartender. I'm scared. This bitch is tall. You approach the bar. Buy a drink, 10 pieces? Ah, uh, uh, no. I don't bitch is staring at me like that. I don't get it. Uh, the dancer. Hello. You approach the dancer. Her eyes trained on you. How are you, sweetheart? How would you want... How do you want to go about this? Ask how much a night with her is. Try to flirt with her. Try to flirt your way into a free night? Uh, I think I'm just gonna ask. How much is a night with you, ma'am? He bats her eyes. For a good-looking thing like you, 75 pieces. You'd not take a moment to deliberate. Here for a night? Alright, thank you, ma'am. You give her a curt nod before walking away back to the middle of the saloon. She about to make me go bankrupt. I guess I have no choice. You approach the large drunk man. He looks down at you lazily, a smile growing wide on his face. Oh wow, you're a cute little thing, aren't you? He blinks a few times, attempting to focus on you. He's handsome, but strange, looming over you with a strange hunger. Maybe it's his sheer height. This man has to be nearly seven feet. He makes you feel small and weak. It's not good. Probably wants to escape his dark snare. Stare. What is someone like you doing in a place like this? I swear I've never seen you around here before. He pauses as if remembering his manner, his manners. Read, goddammit. He sits up straight, turning his head a little. My, the name's Jack, without the C. Pleasure to meet you. Ew, did you just burp? You're disgusting. He coughs a little, attempting to figure out your name by just staring or reading your mind, maybe. Degenerate. Degenerate, oh wow, that's a really, that's a, that's real cute. He laughs, smile big, and voice bubbly. 
You decide to stop talking to the fellow. He seems like a scary drunk. That was weird. Oh, can I, why can't I talk to Ren? Let me talk to him, please. All right. So we went to the saloon, the store. I guess let's talk to the cowgirl. It won't hurt. Standing near the shelves of horse tack, an intimidating young woman in green examines a horse bridle. She looks beautiful, but talking to her is going to be difficult. She didn't even really look up when you entered the store, so she's not exactly looking for conversation. Still, you decide to approach, raising a hand to wave in greeting. Hi, I'm Degenerate. I'm new around here. What's your name? The woman barely lifts her head to look at you. She speaks her name plainly. plainly. Jade. She promptly goes back to ignoring you. Uh, walk away from her. Because <laughs> I, I feel like she doesn't want to talk. It's, it's fine. Downtown. You walk along the path past the sheriff's office, finding the rest of the summer fair. Where would you like to go? The pasture, the creek, back uptown? Um, what, what's back uptown? Oh, so back there. Go back. Leave town, question mark? I don't like the question marks. Uh, let's go to the creek. Oh! I should never came here. You walk along the small path, finding yourself next to the creek. What would you like to do? Follow the creek upstream. Head back downtown. I guess I'll approach this weird clown. I don't like clowns. Like, it's one of my fears. So, this is not fun. You approach the strange clown, pausing when he seems most startled. He stares at you, eyes wide and glossy like two strange marbles. Um, hello. How would you even get to know this guy? He stares at you, and under his clown paint, you can see him turn a bit red, the flesh crawling down his neck as he looks at the floor. He parts his lips as though to speak before mumbling something incoherent to himself. What? He peers up, startled yet again, before he turns away from you, beginning to walk along the river. I'm gonna stay where I am. What the fuck? Nigga go mumble and then walk away? You find yourself a bit nervous to follow the, the strange man down the creek. You stand in place as soon as he disappears from view. Okay. Let's leave. Pasture. Hello? What is that on your pants? Oh, they're pants. Those cowboy pants. Help wanted? You take a small path to a pasture, which is currently lacking any cattle. Approach the happy man. Read the sign to the right. You read the sign. Snakes wanted? He biting livestock? What? With pay? Oh, will pay. Hmm. Huh. Search for snakes? Uh, hello? You're a cutie pie! Hi! This one's cute. When you approach the yellow man, you notice his eyes flickering over the pasture nervously. As you come closer, he sends you an awkward smile, lifting his hand in a high wave. Well, hello there. You're the guest staying at the inn, aren't you? Uh, how do you know that? It's a small town, so honestly, it's not surprising that word has spread about your presence. Yeah, that'd be me. My name is Degenerate. It's nice to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you, Degenerate. I'm... What? I'm Daijin. And I'm a shepherd around these parts. Okay. <laughs> your mind flashes for a moment. Back to the sign you saw in the, f in the field. Oh, you're a shepherd? Are you the one who put up the sign about the snakes? I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Daijin? Daijin? He can't confirm it. Why am I saying it? Daijin's nose wrinkles a little in annoyance at the mention of snakes, but he nods. Those damn snakes keep biting my poor sheep. And I'm damn tired of it. If you catch them, they'll be a good reward for you. As he speaks, Daijin's eyes seems to wander. The flock nervously. Ask him what's wrong. 
You can tell Daijin seems concerned about something, his eyes searching over the pasture anxiously. Even though you don't know him very well, you feel strangely compelled to help. Is something wrong? You look nervous. Well, okay, I gotta ask you a big favor. And it's a little bit embarrassing. Kinda sounds shady to be honest, but you figure you should probably give it a shot. I mean, it's not the craziest thing you've ever done, right? What do you need? Maybe I can help you. The man seems relieved at the idea that you'd be open to helping. Well, you see, I think I lost track of one of my sheep, but the problem is I can't really count much higher than ten. Are you dumb? The man holds up two hands, his face a little red at the as he wiggles his fingers. I've only got ten fingers, you know. <laughs> so he can only count to ten because he has ten fingers. Okay. Agree because you feel bad for him. Agree because you think it's he's funny. Ask why he even lost track of them in the first place. I thought that was funny. You can't help but laugh a little, lifting both your hands and wiggling your fingers back. Well, I've only got ten myself, but I'll see if I can do any better. A quick head count of the sheep reveals there are 22 of them in the pasture. Well, if there's 22 of them, how many are you supposed to are supposed to be? The man cringes a little, laughing sheepishly. Well, good news is you can count better than me. He hesitates, then grins at you awkwardly. You're beginning to realize this is the face he makes when he wants something. Uh, I hate to ask, but can you help me look for that last sheep? Honestly, it's kind of hilarious. The mess this guy has gotten himself into. Sure. You give his question a moment of consideration, then smile back at him brightly. Yeah, I think I'd give you a hand. Spitting up... Oh, splitting up would probably be the most efficient way to search, to be honest, but... The moment you try to branch off, Daijin snags your hand in his, leading you with him. The sun is beginning to go down, so the shining light of golden hour looks like a halo behind his head. Come on, stay with me. We should work together. Even when he's sure you're sticking with him, he doesn't let go of your hand, leading you happily. He pulls you into a tr the tree line to search, poking through the bushes, the brush, and leaves. Ah, oh, there it is! It doesn't take long before you hear a mournful bleeding, and Dojin drops your hand to run to the source. Sure enough, about ten feet away, the foul little sheep stands stuck, its wool tangled on a bramble. Daijin deftly entangles the sheep's wool, ignoring the scrapes and cuts the thorns create on his hands. When the sheep is free, he wraps his arms around it, hugging it <laughs> to his chest for a while. I'm glad the poor thing is alright. It's not very safe for animals to get lost out in these woods. For a moment, he seems distant, remembering something distasteful. Not too safe for humans either. We'd better get going before nightfall. Daijin takes your hand in his, looping a rope leading around the sheep's neck with the other. By the time you make it back out to the pasture, the sun has sunk close to the horizon. Daijin herds his sheep back into their pen, and you give them a quick head count as he does. All 23 are present and accounted for. Daijin grins turning to you with a wash of pink on his face that could be the sunset or it could be the blush. Well, I have some free time if you'd like to sit and hang out. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> he leads you into the big barn nearby and you and up a ladder into a hayloft. Okay. In the hayloft, the hodgepodge of belongings are strewn about near a makeshift hay bed. Dijon plops down at the edge of the loft, his legs dangling over the edge, and pats the spot next to him. Sitting there, staring down at the rust rustling sheep as they seek somewhere comfortable to rest, can't help asking, Why take this job in the first place if you don't mind saying, Doesn't not counting make it hard? Daijin seems to debate answering for a moment, then he speaks up. Well, at first, I was going... <laughs> I was going to go to the big city and make something of myself, even though you can't count past ten. I used to live at the church orphanage a few towns over, and when I finally was released, I wanted to make it big. How? 
I guess on the way to the big city, I ran into this town. The owner of this ranch offered me an easy job watching sheep in exchange for a warm place to sleep and food. And well, not to sound like a lazy bum, but that seemed a whole lot easier than making it big. He can't help but smile, flopping down and to lay his back and stare up at the barn ceiling. Besides, it's a job that makes me happy. Sheep are cute and soft. I like a job that's not too difficult. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. Honestly, in a way, his laziness is kind of endearing. He seems happy with the life he's made for himself. You settle down to lay on the loft next to him, and are surprised to catch him looking at you. His expression is different than the dorky grins you've seen on him before. Daijin's gaze seems almost hungry now as he looks at you. You know, you look pretty great in lighting like this. That's nice to know. Daijin shifts closer to you, one broad hand coming to rest warmly in your thigh. You know, now that I don't have to worry about rounding up the sheep, we could have a little fun. Gotta say, I've been wanting you all day, but I just couldn't find the right chance. What do you say, wanna take a roll in the hay? I don't know, should I? It seems even at the at a time like this, Dojin can't take himself seriously. The goofy smile on his face is pretty endearing, honestly. And he looks pretty good himself in this light. You know what? Yeah, that sounds like a damn good time to me. Daijin seems to pause for a moment, his face flushed deep red as he watches you. I gotta ask, honey. How do you want to do this? Because... I don't think there's many other people I'd trust to be on top, but for you, I can make an exception. <laughs> uh, what should I do? How tall is he? Tall enough. If he's... he's <laughs> Dangerous territory. Um, He said he's willing. So I'm gonna oblige. At his question, you smile, shifting to position to push his chest, laying him flat on his back. Let me take control here. Let me make sure it feels really good for you. Dajin gives you a dopey smile, propping himself up a little <laughs> on his elbows so he can watch you. All right, show me how good it could feel. Dajin seems a bit hesitant. Under this is way better than being kidnapped <laughs> like really under all this confidence he's not entirely sure about giving up control what do you mean he said it he said i was just still you pull his pants down his legs easily casting them aside so they land on top of the hay bed Cannot explain how much I want to take this man's dick from the back of slipping like it's my last Thanksgiving meal. Like, oh my god. Anyways, continue. Daijin was already half hard. It only takes a few strokes of your hand to get him the rest of the way. His smile is warm and dopey as you stroke. His eyes half lidded with excitement. You're pretty good at that. Daijin's eyes widen when you lean down. He clearly wasn't expecting it, and it's hard for him to keep from thrusting. A groan of pleasure escapes him as he reaches a hand down to rest against the back of your head. To his disappointment, though, you soon pull your mouth off of him. A lewd pop noise escaping as you pull up. <laughs> so he says... <laughs> he says... Don't stop yet. I haven't even- <laughs> I haven't even- I haven't finished! Daijin's whiny plea for more is honestly quite cute, but he doesn't know what you have in store next. Be patient, we're not done yet. You're letting me take the reins, remember? You press your fingers to his lips to hush him, a smirk playing on your lips as you fumble with your clothing. You pull your pants down and- in your underwear along with them, casting them to the same direction as Dojin's pants. Daijin's. Why'd I say Dojin? Once you're properly exposed, you swing a leg over his hip as you're straddling them. 
Reaching one hand down to position Daijin's member, you slowly, carefully lower yourself down. The sound that escapes him sounds like he wants to be in- he must be in pure heaven. Something between a moan and a growl. Daijin's hands lift to grab your hips, but you push them off, pinning his wrists to the floor. <laughs> Look, Daijin, don't touch. Your pace starts slow, lifting and lowering your hips carefully as you ride. <laughs> a slow pace seems a slow pace seems torturous for Dojin, but you're having a great time making him wait. Do you want me to go faster? Daijin nods quickly, desperate as he watches you bounce. This this is good. Like I'm having a great time. Daijin's voice seems a bit strangled and his eyes widen when he hears your next words. <laughs> then beg. What? You heard me. Beg for it. This is lovely. Daijin seems quite shocked, his face growing red at the idea of having to beg. Though so he's desperate, and you know it. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> for you. Ah, you got 100 points. Seeing him beg like this was pretty adorable, honestly. Well, alright, I guess that was pretty good. You can't help but smile as you pick up the pace, enjoying the way he shudders beneath you. He's clearly not too experienced when it comes to... The do. Going a bit brain dead as you ride him. Still, his member is well-sized as you feel yourself growing close to... Um... Arriving with every bounce of your hips. I was thinking, sorry. <laughs> Daijin's already struggling to hold himself back. A muffled little moan escaping him. <laughs> Just okay, you can finish now. Daijin seems to stop caring about holding back at your words. <laughs> goofy ass, look at his face. <laughs> he looks goofy! Before too long, you can feel the warm rush of his... Mm, milk spilling inside your hole, making each motion more slick and smooth. The warmth and added sensation are more than enough to drive you over the edge yourself. You can feel yourself tightening around him, your insides squeezing warmly as you shudder in pleasure. You rest there on top of Daijin for a moment or two, then slowly pull off him, settling down to lay on his side. <clears throat> <coughs> That was interesting. Now, with you laying beside him, Daijin pulls you close, pressing his face to the top of your head and breathing in your scent. God, you really are so perfect, aren't you? Daijin's voice is softer now, sweetly enamored and his, as he holds you to his chest. We can get dressed in the morning, right? Tonight, I just want to hold you. You give Daijin a sleepy sort of nod. Too tired to protest, he really managed to wear you out. Daijin laces a hand through your hair, stroking it warmly as he settles down to sleep. I'm so happy you're mine. If you were more awake, you might think it odd that he assumes you're his after only one night, but for now, you drift peacefully off to sleep. When morning comes, and the sun rises above the horizon, you sit up sleepily rubbing your eyes. Where are you? Looking around at the loft, you remember what happened, and you glance at the man, still holding you tight. You extricate yourself carefully searching for your discarded clothes and straightening your appearance you have things to do today so you can't stay here forever as you walk away from the barn you find yourself a little unsettled you could swear it seems like someone is watching you go but then again maybe it's one of the sheep you find yourself in a summer fair town okay you step on something huh you found in a hundred piece coin sweet <gasps> Money! Where would you like to go? To the store! You enter the suite for a training pools. Okay. Uh, talk to the clerk. You approach the store clerk. How can I help you? Clothing! Ugh! This stuff is so expensive. Ah! <laughs> uh, uh. Let's get the fishing rod. Since it's, it was 20 and I now have a big bank. Yay! Um, downtown. I want to go. Can I fish? 
the creek. <gasps> He's back. I thought he was gonna be like gone. Should we follow him this time? You walk along the small path, find yourself next to the creek. What do I have to do? Where's the strange clown? Let's approach him. Let's see what happens this time. Approach the strange clown, pausing when he seems almost startled. He stares at you, eyes wide. Okay, so it's the same. He stares at you under his. Okay, I think he says. Yeah, he does the same thing. Let's. Ooh, his eyes are in between the words and it's scary. Let's follow him. You follow him with a bit of curiosity. What's up with this guy? He doesn't seem to notice you follow as he walks across the creek at a more shallow point. The water is loud and catches you off guard. All you can do is stare at the water, then at the back of his head. What do you do? Head through the water, trying to find a brighter way across. Let's just go through the water. We're wearing pants. It's fine. If I was wearing a dress, that'd be another story. You decide there's no harm in just walking across, right? You take a step into the water. Your shoe's surprisingly durable. You attempt to hurry, finding that the creek is so, the creek so far reaches about your calves. Honestly, it isn't so bad. The cool water lapping against your skin as you trudge across. That is until you can swear you feel something brush up against your leg. You pause, realize that you're stuck about halfway through the creek water reaching just your knees and you feel it again what the hell oh, i don't know what's happening you tense up unable to move as you feel something strange against your leg you're too afraid to move so instead you freak out in the water screaming and thrashing to attempt to get it off of you whatever it is you stumble kicking and yelling oh i should have saved as you fall back slipping on the slick river stones beneath your shoes Cold water engulfs you, swallowing you whole. You swear you can feel something grabbing and pulling on your leg. A monster? The water isn't so deep, but you find yourself helpless as you, you're carried downstream. You can't breathe. Water burns as it crawls its way up your nose and down your throat to your lungs. Finally, you catch on something, grabbing it and pushing on it for help. Oh my goodness! You grip onto the large fallen tree for dear life. But it isn't enough as you're once again sucked under the water. Oh my gosh, you try your best, but it's not enough. Oh god. Did, did you die? What the fuck? What is happening? Welcome. It seems you've perished one way or another. Where am I? In front of me? Well, obvious fucking- uh, Obviously! You look around, and then down, but there is no body to be found. Or at least, what you know to be your body. I didn't mean to die. Most people don't. Some do. He's huge, towering over you. What is happening right now? And well, terrifying at least. I wasn't ready, please. Many souls come to me and say those exact words. I have a feeling you really weren't ready. I was just curious. You must have a purpose, have you not? Your energy is quite strong. You're important one way or another, I assume. He doesn't seem to be moving, but your mind can't quite focus on his shape. Please, I can't go yet. His many eyes seem to be focused on you. Call me Mortem. Sure. I'll send you back, but you won't have any memory of this conversation while on Earth. Really? You feel lucky to have such a chance. I hope not to see you again, alright? Not for a long while. You find yourself grateful, and it seems you don't need to express it. Farewell. I cannot believe that just happened. Do I have my- Oh... Go to the- Go back downtown. I wanna try that again, but not die? Hello? I would like to talk to you. I don't know what happened. I, <laughs> maybe I should have found another way across. Okay. Yeah, you decide to look around for some other way to get across. While searching, it dawns on you that you better be quick. That clown of a man sure has a pep to his step. 
The water is bubbling loud, and soon enough, a good bit down, you find a large tree which has fallen onto the water. The tree that didn't help me last time. Did you climb it or keep looking? Time is of the essence here. Keep looking for a way across. Give up. Uh, cross it. You step up onto the tree, giving it a little push with your shoe to test it out. It doesn't budge. Well, seems the coast is clear. You keep an eye out for the clown. Sure, you can still see him in the trees as you carefully walk along the tree. Though you've hit a bit of an issue, the end of the tree reaches about three quarters across. You look from your feet to a small shoreline, debating what to do. Jump! Screw it. You take a step back and then gain some speed before jumping off the broken tree. You land in the water only a foot or two inwards, so just your shoes get wet. You walk carefully, heading after him with a bit of delight. That worked! You follow- Following the black mop of hair ahead, you make your way off to off the shore and into the woods on a small man-made path. From the looks of it, it was made purely from walking alone. Ooh, I'm scared. You must travel this path every day. You follow, but making sure to keep a couple yards back. Anytime you step on a branch or walk through a thicket, the strange man walks faster. Will this guy ever slow down? Finally, he comes to a complete stop, seeming to be staring ahead. Towards wherever he was going. Stay quiet. I think this is the best option. You stare, gulping a little. What is he doing? After what feels like a while, he sinks his knee to his knees, leaning down and beginning to dig in the ground from the looks of it with his bare hands. You knit your brows together in confusion, feeling as though you're almost intruding on something meant to be private. Maybe you are. I mean, you did follow this guy to the woods. He sits up after a while, holding up something. A skull? You freeze up, heart beating loud. So loud you can't hear the woods or the creek or the sound of his footsteps as he continues to walk ahead you aren't sure what to do keep following him i want to figure this out or wait a minute go back let's save okay okay now follow him you decide to rationalize it you didn't see him kill anyone or anything but why would he bury a skull or better put why would he unbury a skull? You let him get a bit ahead before you start walk. We start to walk, following him as every couple of yards he stops, sinking down and checking the earth. Sometimes he doesn't pull out pull anything from the dirt. Other time he does. How does he know where those holes are? You pass each spot, and after a couple, you notice that the trees are marked. A small scratched W. By the eighth one, he seems done, because now he's walking faster. You attempt to catch up without making much noise, but find it difficult to replace his soft steps. Finally, he reaches a small clearing. You hide behind a tree to watch. He turns quick, holding up a skull and looking it over. He has a wire. He has wire and rope, putting it together against something next to the tree. Lawrence. More bones, some animal and some human. It's alright, I have you now, don't worry. He comforts the bones as he sits down next to them. He sh what is going on right now? Like, I'm genuinely scared. He sheds his coat, leaving it on the floor as he works. What's with the red, um, thing? Attaching this gold to a sort of body. Wait, what? Attaching what? Oh, okay. It's quite alright, I know, but the dirt was un was necessary. He murmurs this as he brushes off some old dirt from the skull's structured crevices. Maybe he's just incredibly lonely. Seems like it. You will remember this? You aren't sure what to make of it. And when adjusting your hiding spot, you step on a branch. Of course! His head turns like a deer being alerted, eyes wide as he as they land on you. He's stiff, unmoving, as his mouth falls agape. The ability to speak seems to have been sucked out of him, 
merely at the knowledge of your presence. You both make eye contact, the world in slow motion as she shoots up, beginning to run at you. Oh my. Before you can fully react, he attacks you, arms grasping you as you both fall against the floor. He's panting, scarily strong despite his body weight as he uses one hand against your head, palms smashed against your mouth and nose, other holding your arm down. I don't know what to do! Just try to reason with him, I don't want to bite him. Wait, stop! His breath is heavy, his weight keeping you down as you attempt to get off of, get him off of you. Please, I didn't mean to. You find that with your pleas, he sort of stares as if to listen to you. This is your chance. I just wanted to see what you do- He stares, almost as if he doesn't believe you. Whoa. You stare up at him, his deep blue eyes meeting yours. It feels so strange. He almost looks a little lost. Then he slowly gets up off of you. He pulls something from his hip, a long strange blade. It's a threat. You're frozen. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is creepy, bro. What were you doing? You're frozen on the forest floor for a moment, wondering if he he's hurt people with that knife before. You watch his Adam's apple bob as he gulps, mumbling incoherently. You were just speaking clearly just a second ago. You just heard this man speak moments before, but now he just can't seem to attempt to converse with him. I would love to. You slowly sit up, making sure to give him room. Then you stand, staring at him with big eyes. You decide to stay strong, despite how freaky this guy is. You'll pursue it, why not? <laughs> Though, out of a million, uh, the million things you could ask, what do you do? He seems a bit freaked. His knuckles are white with how he grips the knife. Ask about the buried bones, ask about skeleton, clown makeup. Chicken out because in the end he is some clown freak with a knife. <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's ask about the makeup. Why do you have this stuff on your face? The makeup. He smiles at that shockingly responsive. I want to make people enjoy being around me. He sighs. I just have to enjoy being around them first. He shrugs a little. You take a step toward him, deciding to test the waters a little bit. He seems nervous, but doesn't budge, and you successfully move towards him. Uh, the knife? Why the knife? You gulp, feeling a bit threatened by it. Don't I have a knife? He paused to look from you, down to the knife in his hand. He takes a deep breath, self-defense. You can't help but wonder, taking a step toward him. Why would a guy like you need self-defense? Oh, a guy like- <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, that's what it said! You find yourself almost amused and confused, trying to play it up so you aren't so cowardly. He looks around and, and slowly but surely, you seem to be breaking him down. The woods are dangerous. There, There's a beast out here. And people. <laughs> you take another step, slowly bridging the gap between you two. With your interest in him, without hostility or fear, his grip seems to loosen on the knife. Uh, the bones. You watch his body language gulping a little. Why do you bury bones? His eyes perk up a little, his expression soften a little. It cleans them, like the meat. All them critters eat it up when they're underground. I don't like when they're gross like that. He pauses, looking at the ground. It doesn't work either, when they're nasty. What work? You stare, trying to get an answer out of him. He seems to not want to answer. You finally bridge the gap completely, leaving you standing in front of him. He's a bit threatening to look up at close, look at up close, but you think you understand him a little more. He's almost enjoyable in a weird way. Is there something wrong with you? A shiver runs down your spine. You nod slowly, thinking you've gotten enough information. You take a few steps back. I'm gonna go, alright? He stares and then slowly nods as if to give you permission. The creek is that way. Oh, I wanted to ask one more! 
He points past you, making it clear. Thank you. Thank! You turn and begin to walk away. What the hell even was that whole interaction? Achievement! It seems so strange and bizarre. After a while, you pause, feeling eyes on you. You earned a stalker? That's stuff. What? In fact, you swear you can hear him following you now. You hasten your steps, heading off to find the creek again. After a while, you can hear it. Roaring water. It's the creek. Yay! You're finally back. Okay. What would you like to do? Um... Let's follow the creek upstream. You make your way up along the creek, taking note of the breeze and sound of soft water. You arrive at a pond. It's large enough to swim or perhaps fish. <gasps> Ooh! Forgeables! Go fishing. You approach a small pond, eyes widen with curiosity. You can't help but wonder if there's fish here. Before your very eyes, as if the universe was... Listening to you, you watch a shadow swim through the water. That's, that's ought to be the fish. Maybe if you had a fishing rod, you'd be able to catch it. I do! Now let's fish. Hey, you have a fishing rod. Time to fish. Looks like you got a bite. Do your best to reel the sucker in before the time runs out. Try to hit the arrows in time to the beat. Reeling your fish. Use S. B K L or one two three four. Where's the radio? Um. Okay. Oh, start. Oh crap. S D K L. Okay, I'm ready. I got this. <gasps> it's a rhythm game. Already, guys. I promise I'm good at rhythm games. I promise. This is like... <laughs> Good! They really, uh... Miss! Miss! I swear I'm good at video- I'm good at games. I'm good at rhythm games. Did I get it? No. You you reeled in your rod but found nothing on the hook. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We're doing we're gonna keep doing this until I get a fish. I will meet you guys when I get a fish. <laughs> guys, I got a fish! <gasps> Rainbow trout! Yay! You smile and enjoyed the fish you caught. Yay! Let's go cook something at the kitchen. And you enter the small kitchen, the cooking pot beckoning you. Um... Let's do rainbow trout. And... And that's it. <laughs> Yay! What is that? I just messed up my fish and it took me so long to get it. How about I just... Let's go head to the kitchen. I mean... Who should I talk to? Let's go back to the sheriff's office. If you're in here and complain about Jack again... Oh, hello there. What did Jack do? Sorry, you aren't who I was expecting. How can I help you? Speak... Jedediah. Um... Speak to... Report a crime? You walk up to the officer, flashing a smile. He's gotta be cusp and 50, right? What does that mean? The beggars can't be choosers. He's still handsome. Oh! He looks you over, trying to figure out what you're all about. Flirt with him, show interest about his job. So does this town have a lot of crime? It seems like such a nice place. His interest is clearly piqued, and he adjusts his posture. Well, this town is 
relatively small, only about 30 at most if you're round everyone up. Only a few bad apples, mostly young people who have a little too much fun at their saloon. You nod. Nobody really means much harm, though. His eyes meet yours. Why do you ask? He seems skeptical of you. I think being a sheriff is incredibly brave. Well, I just think being an officer is incredibly brave. And must be really dangerous. The brow narrow before he busts out a husky laugh. Well, shit, you're serious? Well, that's quite charming of you. He sort of smirks, awestruck before he looks from you to the door. You must have changed something within him. No stranger. You have a name? My name is Degenerate. Sounds foreign, I like it. <laughs> you aren't exactly sure what he means by that, though. I could show you around. You nod quickly, and before you know it, he's out the door, motioning for you to follow. Outside, you both walk towards the rear of the building, where you see a horse tied up to a post. The horse looks fine, munching on some hay in a trough, then looking up lazily at the sound of footsteps and ha on harsh ground. This is Mirabella, my horse. Cool. What's up? He, smi he smiles, walking up before patting her. She lets out a loud neigh, and you'd, sne you'd smear- What? You'd swear she'd be a great horse actor for some horse shows. You approach awkwardly, putting out a hand for her to sniff. Jed watches as well, gulping a little as this must be a big test. She looks up and then lets out a puff of air through your her nose before putting your palm with your chin. Oh, well, that ain't that sweet. She likes you. That's nice. Let out a sigh of relief, then watch as the officer climbs on top of her. He extends his hand out for you to take. Oh, he extends his hand for you to take. Smiley, smiling widely with a joyful delight. You take his hand, hoisting yourself up onto the steed. You find yourself settled behind him, gripping the saddle as he unties her from the post. He clicks with his tongue and lets and gets a moving, trotting towards the small path from behind the jail house. I'm gonna take you somewhere real special, but you promise me you can't go showing other people, okay? It stays between you and me. Sure. You nod quick as the horse begins to pick up speed. You make your way through some fields and rocks, leaving the small town of Summerfair and heading beyond its borders. Maribel is no joke, picking up speed with very, with every passing tumbleweed and cactus. You begin to shake, and at the rocky moment, you find yourself slipping off of the saddle. You wrap your arms around his waist. You wrap, you wrap your arms around his waist to settle yourself. He stiffens, sitting straight up as he continues to guide the horse on the small of an ever-fading trail. You can feel him sort of relax against you for a moment, and moving back to hold on to you as he continues onward. It doesn't look like much. His horse comes to a slow trotting instead of a fierce run, then to a stop altogether. Here we are, my happy place. Oh, your happy place, what's this? He sort, he sort of struggles before sliding off of the horse. Before you can hop off yourself, he reaches up grabbing your hips and pulling you off the horse. Your face flushes a deep red and you find yourself lost in his gray blue eyes for a moment. You're both sort of stricken, but he's the first to break it, letting go of your waist with a foreign shyness. He gulps, lips curling into a soft, gruff smile. This is my thinking spot. <laughs> this reminds me of, um... What's his name? Robert? From Dream Daddy. He says this is the air and not directly at you. This is to the air, not directly at you. I come here just to enjoy life. You can see his hand on his hip resting against a flask, not his weapon. You can only assume he comes out here to drink as well. I don't know what's, what it is about you, but I feel like talk, taking you here. You just met and this guy's already taking me to his happy place. He turns to look at you, a smile on his tired face. He smiled back, moving up and close before appreciating the view of the mountains. You can tell why he likes it so much. Since you're somewhat new around here, I'll tell you a bit about the town history. That'd be nice, actually. He settled down, sitting on a rock. He reaches, patting next to him and offering you a seat. 
You sit down curious about what he, what he has to offer. Summer Fair started 50-something years ago. My father having founded this town. Cool. When I was a kid, this place was even smaller than it was now. Having been just a trading post and inn. That there inn you're staying in is one of the oldest buildings in town. The man who run is, runs it is a part of quite the family. He did threaten to take my fingers, so... His mother ran the post before it, and then the inn until she passed. God rest her soul. He looks ahead at the mountains as he speaks. He pauses, looking at you. How do you feel about the town so far? He seems genuinely curious. His normal hard, his normally hard expression much softer while he's out here. I, I like it. It's, it's cool. I like it. It's real cozy. I enjoy that not to mention it. It's in such a pretty, pretty location. You motion to the mountains and trees. Yeah, I really enjoy it here. I did experience a bit outside of here before I was sheriff. He shrugs a little. I haven't lived too far from here in years, though. Mags always told me I should branch. I should go branch out. Mags? Is that the dancer chick? The name throws you off guard. Mags? Ah, yes, my knees. Oh, uh, never mind. He laughs a little. He's always telling me I should have pursued something else. You raise your brows. Like what? He gets a twinkle in his eyes as he looks at you. I always wanted to be a painter. A painter? It also throws you off guard. A painter? You could almost laugh. He really doesn't seem to be the type. He looks like he could laugh as well, but it's probably due to expression on your face. I mean it, I'll show you. He grabs something from his hip, offering it to you. A notebook. You must use it to record information down and then on when on the job. Okay. He, he flips through a few pages before settling it in your hands. Drawings. Oh wow. You can't help but be a bit surprised. What's that picture up there? <laughs> Bye, sugar. He leans over shoulder to shoulder with you as he f as with you as he flips the page. This is what <laughs> this is just what I manage in my spare time. Ask him what he likes to draw. Ask him if he has any paintings. What do you like to draw? Oh, do you want do you want a nice answer or an honest answer? Your brow raise. Your brows raise, curious, you nudge him, honest. He looks at you smirking a little before he shrugs. I like to draw pretty women. His thumb runs over the corner of the page. I like drawing what's around me too. You nod a little, smiling as you lean into him a little. His face turns <laughs> a little red, but the silence is enough for you to both realize you like being near one another. He finally breaks it. Coughing a little before chuckling. Clambering into Jed's, onto Jed's horse, you both settle comfortably. The ride isn't very long, but from the looks of it, his home is just outside of downtown. The house is small, the cabin built off the exit road of town. It looks older, quaint even. He ties up his horse, helping you off the horse. Here. He holds your hand, not letting you go quite yet. Inside the inside his house smells warm and spicy like herbs and tobacco. These are my paintings. You admire them, watching carefully. Then you both lock eyes. <laughs> to dinner it? Yes. <laughs> Before you can turn to look, he reaches, pulling you close. He presses his lips softly to yours, holding you close. You honestly aren't sure how to react. He pulls away, startled by his own actions. He stares deep into your eyes. Kiss him? Question mark. There's nothing else I could do. You lean back into him, kissing him softly. At your interest, he wind his arms around you, pulling you close. Pressing against his chest, he feels warm. Rough hands firm against your back. They're delicate. Careful as he slowly untucks your shirt. My shirt was tucked. Then he slides his hand around, unbuttoning your shirt. His hands move along, lips brushing past your cheek to focus instead on your neck. 
He clutches the fabric a moment, one hand along the buttons and the other against your lower back. You're so charming. His lips brush against your neck as he speaks. Then he presses a soft kiss to the more sensitive flesh. With you probably unbutton, with you properly unbutton, he's quick to pull against your clothes, pulling the upper garment down and off your arms. It is so easy to romance these people. <laughs> they probably haven't seen a, um, a person that's not in the town for a while. He pulls away, pausing to admire you before he unbuttons his own shirt. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> it's like, I, I just said it. I just said it. I just said it. It's been a while. Don't judge me harshly if I'm too rough. A little shiver runs up your back at the, at the, at the line. Heart thumping as you carefully pull off your garments. Left in your underwear, you find yourself eagerly watching his every move. He pulls off most of his clothes, reaching and grabbing you by the hand. Grasping your hand in his, he tugs you close towards the room to the side. You find yourself almost giggling as you follow him to his room. Eager to please, an idea formulates in your mind. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna- I, I did my job last time, so. That idea is left is to let him handle it. You've worked so hard, you deserve a break. He guides you to the bed, chuckling a little as he pushes you down beneath him. You find yourself almost playfully almost playful regarding this. Rest down below and only your undergarments. You're surprised he sinks low against your body. <laughs> Still above your hips, he pulls your underpants down. You shiver at the brush of cold air against you. His eyes soften, fingers brushing against you before he presses... Your breath hitches, almost embarrassed by this curious touch. Guys, the H key is like... It's tempting me. His thumb moves in circles, which cause you to arch your back. His hand is rough, worker's hands. And you feel as his fingers brush against your entrance as well. He watches you with a coy smirk. Then you feel him push two fingers. You're startled by the invasion, but his constant touch melts your worries. He laughs a little, careful as he pushes two fingers. You find yourself enjoying it, breathing and warm against as his against him as he pleasures you. Honestly, at a glance, you never expect <laughs> this man to be so servicing. Right? So true. It's a true treat. Though his pace seems to quicken. And you weren't quite expecting it. You can't contain your words. Is he really thinking of going as far as to make you... His fingers quicken. Thoughtful, his thumb still swirling. I'm not gonna continue. <laughs> his eyes are focused on yours, your heart thumping at his hungry sort of glances. I'm waiting for him to- I'm scared he might look up. <laughs> you find yourself quite overwhelmed by it with his touch, your hands moving down to clutch against him. Your breath is a mess, lips parted as your head tips back. You're close. Guys, I it's like, I can't, I can't. A loud moan bubbles up <laughs> out of you as you finish. Your hands clutching his wrist as his fingers low at their striking pace. You leave his hands slick, a flush scrawled over your face at the sight. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> he sits up chuckling a little as he adores you. He's interrupted by a knock at the door. You both glance back, startled. Judd is quick, grabbing his pants. Don't worry, just give me a sec. He shuffles on his trousers, heading out of the of his bedroom to his front door. You hear as he opens the door, then some arguing. Oh, Alright, Florence. Shit, just let me get my clothes on. 
he re-enters the room. A group of outlaws strolled in 20 minutes ago, robbed poor Olive. He shakes his head, scrambling to get his clothes on. I have to go. Do you need help getting back to town? Um, you quickly grab a hold of your underwear, heading onto the main room for the rest of your clothes. I should be fine. Then you froze. Then you freeze. Oh shit. Florence is in the doorway. Having witnessed your attempt to get your clothes, a flush crawls across your face. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he looks at the floor frantically. Promise I didn't see anything. He covers his eyes with the hand, stepping back awkwardly. You look from the doorway back to Jeb. I'll go. <laughs> sorry. You feel a little embarrassed, but at least you had a good time. You head out the door, heading back to town. Luckily, the town lights are very much in view. After a long walk, you enter the inn, heading to your room. You undress, change to something more comfortable. And... <laughs> oh, maybe you could forget that awkward encounter, you shut your eyes. You wake up with a jolt, startled by the morning light. Oh my gosh! Some fucking common criminals decide to interrupt my alone time with Jed. I so annoying. All right. Um that was Curtain Cowboys. I'm going to stop here because I know there's so much there's a lot more to this game, I'm going to guess. It's actually pretty fun right now, honestly. <laughs> I'm a fan of Daijin so far. Of course, who's, uh, it's, I know it's the first guy I went to, but it, sometimes it's it's just that easy. You find the first person and you just fall in love. So, same thing with um, <laughs> uh, Ren. I went to him first, so that's why. Anyway, that that, that has nothing to do with anything. But that's that was current Cowboys. It was really fun. I definitely want to continue playing this. I think it's super cute. You get to like customize your character and everything. It's very nice. And the and when you're like undressing, it actually matches what you're wearing. So if you're wearing a dress, it's going to say in the description of the undressing that it's a dress. And I I love that. Unless if I change it it might change. I don't know. But yes, I am wearing pants, and it said that I was taking off pants and not a dress. I like that. Um, but <laughs> besides all that, though, this game was really fun. No wonder it's like eight dollars, or what is it, like nine? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna play more of this. So if you guys look forward to that, go on and leave that like, and leave a comment. You know, subscribe. And I'll see more of Curtain Cowboys, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>